Hi, my tubies, my TikTokers. My nails look atrocious right now, and I have to go fix them because, you know, I uh, had COVID, and today I went to the doctor with hopes that my COVID would be gone because it's been, what, um, since uh, Saturday? And I went to the doctor today, today, and they said that it still was positive. So I still have COVID. They said that maybe that's just the residue of it or what have you, but I still need to go home and have bed rest and what have you. Uh, I feel amazing. I don't have any trouble breathing. I don't have any more earaches. I don't have any more uh, sore throat because I had it before. Uh, yeah, so I got up early this morning, went to the doctor with hopes that my COVID was gone, but it's not. So I still have to, I'm going to do my nails later on because I look like terrible, but, um, I feel healthy and they gave me all of this, some medicine or something like that's like steroids. I'm not taking that. I'm just not. Uh, the only thing I have is still a cough the uh, cough that I have. So they gave me some pills for the whatever. Anyway, my purpose for he uh, being here is because you know how I always tell you, if you still insist on being married and you still want to be a part of this dating world, always make sure that you allow God and Jesus Christ to pick your partner. At the same time, even with pastors, pastors this day and age, you have to be careful. Now with this pastor, so-called pastor, I would have known straight out the gate that this dude is just a demon that Satan the devil plant, planted into the congregation to try to, you know, uh, attack true sheep and true followers of Christ. I would have known this by the way he preaches. Anytime you have somebody who preaches and they're with this, oh, the Lord said, oh, and the Lord said, and oh, and they got to take breaths and all these gasps. That's not no real preacher. Jesus Christ never preached that way. That's a facade. That's a fake and a phony. But without further ado, with uh, viral crimes here, this is a pastor. He shoots his wife in front of their three children. Now, this woman have been going through domestic violence for years. So... Everything that you see that appears to be one way, please. This is why I always keep checking on my daughter. You know, I always keep my eye on her. She will always have a safety net anyway. Without further ado, I want you to check out this pastor who shoots his wife. Without further ado, check this out. Alexandria is where it all began. You know that? Yes. Remember, uh, okay, last time we came here, it was just me and you. I was pregnant with Kate. We was on the train. Y'all, the fish, they sold out of the fish food. They can only eat so much or they're going to end up like me. <laughs> this is the story of Gabrielle Prino, a 27 year old woman who had seemingly built a loving family with her husband, Danny Prino Jr the senior pastor of Bright Morning Star Missionary Baptist Church in Pineville, Louisiana. Their picture-perfect life on social media hit a dark reality, as on June 21, 2023, tragedy struck, shattering the lives of a mother and her three innocent young children. Join us as we delve into the heart-wrenching events unfolding that fateful afternoon. Welcome to Vice to Macomb, Mississippi. Macomb is a small city located in the southern part of the state of Mississippi, it is known for its rich history, with roots dating back to the early 19th century and a vibrant cultural scene. Gabrielle Prinell, a resident of Macomb, is a 27-year-old woman who worked as a homemaker and caregiver for her three children. She was the wife of Danny Prinell Jr., the 25-year-old senior pastor of Bright Morning Star Missionary Baptist Church in Pineville, Louisiana. Gabrielle was described as a caring and dedicated mother who always put her children's well-being first. Her personality was marked by resilience and strength, as she endured a history of violence and abuse at the hands of her husband, Gabrielle Pr Now, I want you to take note of what they just said, as she endured a history, a history of violence and domestic disputes. 
Prino had a significant history with Danny Prino Jr., the 25-year-old senior pastor of Bright Morning Star Missionary Baptist Church in Pineville, Louisiana. If you, if you wait on him, if you, if you wait on him, I promise you he's coming. Uh, if you wait on him, I promise you he won't make sense. Uh, see, you still tripping because you lost your job. You still tripping. And now, I want you to take note. You still tripping. Uh, and yeah, you lost your job. Uh, and the Lord going to say, uh, you know damn well, Jesus Christ never preached like that. The disciples never preached like that, gasping for breath. That right there is the identifying mark of one of Satan the devil's demons. Disappointed and mad because y'all broke up and you don't understand it. And you 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 still driving by his house, checking to see if there's another car there. Yeah. You still hurt. You still in your feelings. You still all on Facebook telling your mama, telling your daddy, telling everybody how he hurt you. Oh, you still uh, see things for where they are now. But tell somebody, just hang on a little while. And now notice how he's talking about you telling your mama, you're telling your friends, you're telling your family. Of course, they don't want you to tell your friends and your family. They try to isolate you from your friends and family because they don't want you to have any support when they're abusing you. So be mindful of that, sweetheart. And don't forget when you hear these pastors talk, uh, and they out of breath. And the Lord said, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, he told me to be mindful of snakes like you. That's what he said. Oh, when well, he get exposed, it's going to all make sense why God didn't want you with him. Their journey together started as a romantic relationship, and they were involved for several years before eventually tying the knot. Their love story began before Danny assumed the role of a pastor when he was serving as a deputy with the Rapides Parish Sheriff's Office. As their bond grew, they navigated through life's challenges and joys, supporting each other in their career paths and personal endeavors. As Danny transitioned from a law enforcement officer to a spiritual leader, Gabrielle remained a pillar of strength and encouragement by his side. Their shared experiences and deep-rooted connection likely played a crucial role in shaping Danny's spiritual journey and his role as a pastor. Together, they embarked on a new chapter of their lives as husband and wife, forging a partnership built on love, trust, and a shared commitment to their faith. The congregation of Bright Morning Star Missionary Baptist Church witnessed their devotion to each other and the congregation, inspiring others with their story of faith and love. However, behind closed doors, their relationship was marred by violence and abuse. In 2016, Gabrielle filed a petition for protection from abuse against Danny in Rapides Parish. She bravely spoke out, alleging that she had been subjected to constant beatings and threats to her life. Neighbors and friends later revealed that they had witnessed arguments and heard loud fights between the couple. Some even reported Danny brandishing guns and making terrifying threats towards Gabrielle. Online, the couple portrayed an entirely different image. Alexandra is where it all began. Try this 10-minute morning ritual tonight. Hold on, guys. You know that? Remember, uh, let's see, last time we came here, it was just me. They sold out of the fish food. They can only eat so much, they're going to end up like me. <laughs> Their social media posts depicted a seemingly loving relationship with smiles and affectionate gestures. However, we must remember that social media can often conceal the true reality of a person's life. Experts warn that abusive relationships can be complex and hidden, with abusers manipulating their public image to conceal their actions. Friends and family must be vigilant and supportive in such situations. On a seemingly ordinary day in Pineville, Louisiana, a shocking and disturbing crime took place, sending shockwaves through the community. Pastor Danny Purnell Jr., a respected figure in the local area and lead pastor at the Bright Morning Star Missionary Baptist Church, was involved in a tragic incident that left his wife, Gabrielle Purnell, wounded and fighting for her life. On that fateful day at the Hampton Inn Hotel in Macon, Mississippi, the Purnell family, comprising Pastor Danny Purnell Jr., his wife, and their three children, had checked in for undisclosed reasons. However, tragedy struck at approximately 3.30 p.m., when a horrifying incident unfolded within the confines of their hotel room. According to reports, Pastor Danny Purnell Jr. allegedly shot his wife, inflicting two gunshot wounds. 
The motive behind this tragic act remains unclear, shrouded in mystery. In the aftermath of this shocking act, he then attempted to end himself, intensifying the harrowing scene that unfolded before the innocent eyes of their three young children. Danny Purnell Jr. and his wife, Gabrielle, were rushed to the University of Mississippi Medical Center for emergency medical care. The children were taken into the custody of Child Protective Services while their parents fought for their lives. Danny survived his injuries while his wife remained in the hospital fighting for her life. We're learning new details from police in Mississippi about the charges that Danny Prenell Jr. is facing. He's the pastor of Bright Morning Star Missionary Baptist Church in Pineville, who's accused of shooting his wife and then himself at a Macomb Hotel. Alex Hornchuk's in the studio with more. And Alex, these are some pretty big developments. Right, Brooke. Chief Juan Cloy with the Macomb Police told me today that 25-year-old Danny Prenell Jr. is facing a count each of aggravated domestic violence, disturbing a business, and disorderly conduct. Those charges stem from a shooting at a Macomb, Mississippi Hampton Inn Hotel on June 21st. Police say Prunell shot his wife and then himself while there with his children. We obtained the photo of the crime scene you see on your screen from our media partners at the Enterprise Journal. Now, Chief Cloy would not say why Prunell was not charged with attempted murder or other more serious charges and said the investigation is ongoing. We know Prunell survived his injuries, is in the custody at the Pike County Sheriff's Office, and his wife is still in the hospital in stable condition. The couple's children were placed in Child Protective Services custody after the shooting. We're also learning some new information about prior allegations of domestic violence against his wife through some documents we found in the Rapids Parish Courthouse. In 2016, his wife filed a petition for a protective order against Prunell and said that the petition detailed instances where Prunell was violent with her, saying, quote, I've been constantly getting beaten by my husband and I fear for the life of myself and my unborn child. She goes on to say that Prunell often pointed guns and threatened to kill her. We also learned that Prunell was also briefly employed by the Rapids Parish Sheriff's Office. RPSO told us today that Prunell was assigned to the Corrections Division in June of 2022 before he resigned in December that same year. The community was left in utter disbelief, struggling to comprehend the reasons behind the tragic incident that had shaken the foundations of their once peaceful town. Notice how she says that she was repeatedly, repeatedly abused by her husband and repeatedly beaten by this dude, supposedly a man of God. Like I said, look, I love Joyce Myers. I love Priscilla Shire. Anything that a woman has to say, that's what works best for me when it comes to helping to renew my mind and helping to reach my heart. Because as long as these men, penis work, sweetheart, that is their God. That is their God. They don't really, really care about uh, uh, much of anything. Okay? This man was... Uh, 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 anything that these men preach and teach, I'm sorry, I don't take it seriously. Check out Dawson Speaks. D-A-W-S-O-N Speaks. Check out his channel because he's always exposing pastors, elders, ministerial servants, all these men, bishops, all of these priests, supposed to be men of God. But like I said, you can always tell a true man of God anytime he's not trying to get you to go against your standards, your boundaries. He's trying to help you draw closer to Christ. And you can tell, look at his behavior. Like this dirt bag here, I would have recognized that he was a facade, a fake and a phony by the way he preached by the way he speak and the Lord, you know, he's sitting up here with all of that kind of bull extra doing all of this for show. He's not doing this to try to help and benefit people or draw you closer to Christ. The first time a man puts his hand on you, cheat on you should be the last time. In the aftermath of the incident, social media posts surfaced, giving insight into the couple's life. Danny Purnell Jr.'s Facebook page revealed that he was a former sheriff's deputy, and he openly expressed his devotion to his family and faith. One of his posts on his wife's birthday depicted her as his queen and professed his love and admiration for her. However, he also hinted at possible inner struggles and the quest for self-improvement. He posted about losing his father to the prison system when he was around 10 years old and having to be raised by his grandmother. 
He posted about dealing with rejection from his peers and having marriage issues, but overcoming. You know, people need to stop it with that blame game about their childhood. Oh, about my daddy. He was, honey, you haven't been a child. Okay. You haven't been a child for over 10 years. You're in your own household. Stop the blame game about your childhood. Sigmund Freud bullery. By the way, Sigmund Freud was nothing but a drug addict, a cocaine head, a coke freak, and um, something else, that, that a drug he used to use. So with that Sigmund Freud bullery, everything is about your childhood, put that to rest, okay? You're in the driver's seat of your home now. You're making the decisions. Take responsibility and ownership for the decisions that you are making. Stop the blame game. That's the same thing as you hear a lot of black people. They want to blame white supremacy. It's because of the white people. The reason why we are. Stop the bullery already. Own it. I don't want to hear about nobody's goddamn childhood when you haven't been a child for eons already. Cut the bull. Really. Put that, that ship has sailed. The incident involving Pastor Danny Purnell Jr. Please. and his family is part of a growing and disturbing trend of domestic shootings that have plagued the country for years. Data from a database compiled by multiple media organizations revealed that such tragedies occur almost every 3.5 weeks on average. The consequences are devastating, often resulting in multiple fatalities and deep emotional scars for survivors, especially the children who witness such violence. The close-knit community of Pineville, Louisiana, was left in shock and grief over the incident involving their esteemed pastor. Friends, church members, and neighbors were left grappling with how such a horrible crime could be committed by a man who was supposed to be a pillar of strength and faith in the community. As new You're not supposed to be following after no man anyway. You're supposed to be following after Christ. You have a lot of people who are guilty of idolatry. They're so busy following the governing body, and they care more about what the governing body, what these priests and what these pastors and these bishops have to say, opposed to what Jesus Christ is teaching. Idolatry, that's called. Just so you know. News outlets covered the incident. Authorities launched an investigation to determine the motive behind the shooting. Information about the case's progress, interviews with witnesses, and court footage regarding any potential arrests and charges would be available in the ongoing legal proceedings. The shooting served as a sad reminder of the prevalence of domestic violence within society and the religious community. It brought the issue of domestic abuse to the forefront and sparked discussions about how such acts of violence can be prevented or addressed within faith communities. Pineville community and congregation members were left stunned and heartbroken by the events that unfolded. Many expressed their sympathy for Gabrielle Prenell and her children, praying for her recovery and healing their emotional wounds. As the investigation into the shooting continued, Danny Prenell Jr. was charged with aggravated domestic violence and disturbance of a business. The court case was pending. Aggravated domestic violence. That's it? No, honey. That was attempted murder. This woman is still in the hospital fighting for her life. This is why I'm telling you, ladies, when it comes to listening to these pastors, a lot of what they say, when they start talking that, 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 that speaking, gasping for breath, that right there tells you right there. That's a fake. That's a phony. People like Creflo Dollar. A name like Creflo Dollar. Does that sound does does that sound like someone who is a Christian Creflo Dollar? Right out the gate, that right there tells you this man is a fraud. I mean, let's use common sense here. And you sit around here preaching and teaching in no way that Jesus Christ would preach or the disciples would teach. Come on already. I say listen to what women have to say. I love Joyce Myers. Priscilla Shire, you know, so far, I use, I like Charles Stanley, but even he, as great as he is a preacher and a teacher, he was also a person who was unfaithful in his marriage at one time. Of course, he repented and turned his life around at the same time. When it comes to a man and their penis, we thought that is their God. That's their Lord. That's their savior. When it comes to him, it doesn't say about him cheating or what have you, but who knows why they got into constant arguments. And she was a stay-at-home mother, a stay-at-home wife. I keep telling you women, stop doing that. 
If you want to be a stay-at-home mother and a stay-at-home wife, at least make sure you get $2,500 or $3,000 a month so you can pay all the bills in his absence. My bills come out to $2,500 a month. And as long as I can make that a month, if I wanted to be a stay-at-home, which I don't, I'm paying half the rent because I'm going to have half the say-so up in this piece. I'm paying half the utilities and going half on the food. Oh, yeah. You got to pay the cost to be the boss. Sitting around here letting some man pay for everything, that's a huge mistake. That's what you see a lot of these women doing. And they end up on Facebook, runaway husband, they're devastated. I got the clients, honey. Where do you think I get a lot of my clients? Facebook, runaway husbands, uh, uh, husbands who are uh, alcoholic, drug addicts, sexless marriages. Honey, Sheila is busy. You know, I work on a donation basis. I post my information all over social media. The phone is blowing up. Emails are blowing up. Oh, yeah. And once I receive the donation in my cash app, cash app, I make an appointment, we set it up, and I just listen. I give the best advice that I can to help smarten and wise these women up. And that's it. A lot of women say, Sheila, thank you so much. Oh, my God. They're wiser now. Anyway, still here at home with COVID. Got to get my nails done. I'm going to do them myself because that's what I do. Save money, honey. And when I'm finished with them, you're going to see how professional they look. Anyway, I love you, which is why I do what I do. Be careful, ladies.